Hey everyone, welcome back to the next installment of Dub. Drink up, burn down, Paul Horn, Steve Kwan, Chad Narani. Today, a really cool episode, mostly because it's our first request. So I got a request from a colleague I work with on a mutual clients, Hillary Grady, hashtag awesome suggestion. Uh, today, she basically said it would be really cool to do a how-to. Right? Like, how do you travel with cigars? And what if you didn't like bring a humidor to travel cigars? So we're gonna talk about some the the optimal things to travel with. If you forgot to travel, or maybe you just like Steve and have a problem and get too many cigars. And how do you bring some back when you ran out of space in your humidors? Like, what is the mix? So with that though, as always, we always have a good cocktail and a good cigar. So Steve, what's the cigar? Well, I can't tell you because it's a blind test today. I'm testing Paul <laughs> and Chad's palate. Uh, not so much on what's, you know, sort of the deal, but if they can kind of just tell me, you know, a range of what this cigar should be in terms of price, right? I mean, it's really hard to determine what's inside the cigar once it's lit, in my opinion, because all the good cigars really do taste relatively, you know, the same, except for a few, you know, hints of notes in here and there. But I think that... Um, you know, you guys should give a value at the end and what you think. I like so it. I've taken the band off and there was one of these things in the tip just to keep it from getting damaged. So that's the only clue that they know. And I also did tell them, just so you guys all know, that it is one of my favorite, it is the favorite wrapper, which is the Ecuadorian Habana. And that's all I will tell them. So, so this... With with that in mind, before he gets done, he already told us it was going to be blind bullshit taste test. Yep. So we're drinking gin and tonic, right? Some Tangerine number 10, some tonic water and some lime to make a delicious, clean palate, right? Like a whiskey, tequila, all these fun things are going to ruin the palate. We won't really get a taste of cigar. They're just going to accent flavors that we might otherwise miss. Right. So. so once we find out we love it, we might finish it with a whiskey, mm -hmm. but we need to get through some tasting first. So what were you going to say, Paul? Just looking at it, it kind of looks like a rocky patel to me because of the coloring and there's so many veins on that outer leaf. Yep. So. Okay, guys, before you actually take a hit, does it look harsh? No. No, it looks like. It just looks like a big stick. This look. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Honestly, this looks like one of those traditionally misunderstood cigars. People see the dark wrapper like this, so they automatically assume it's going to be stronger, full-bodied. I'm guessing it's probably going to be sweeter notes. Just looking at it, some chocolate, some coffee. God, it's my this initial is so guess. good. And we're going to find out in just a second. That immediate hit, you'll know. It's like, whoa, this is something really special. This is something really different. On Cigar International, and I just saw this before we started filming here, 254 five and four stars right so it has like a four and a half like 4.6 kind of rating out of 250 plus reviews that's pretty good it is there are some harsh so, critics on that so let, let, we'll come back to that let us smoke a little while yep we need some time to taste this thing drink some cocktails so to the, the main topic right what do you do when you're traveling with cigars? So we kind of broke this down because I think, you know, we all have our, our different tips and tools and tricks. So, you know, my favorite go-tos, at least when I'm, I'm prepared, right, is either one of these cigar caddies or herfedors, right? Now, They're are basically- Are we talking traveling to or bringing cigars back? Both, to be completely honest with you, right? So these things, man, this is a five cigar humidor. It's a 10 cigar humidor, right? You, you get one of these things, open that thing up. You get one of these little like, these little water polos, right? Dip it, dip the inside in distilled water. It'll keep them fresh too. So like, these are basically always packed, ready to rock and roll in my house. So that no matter what, if I'm gonna go golfing or I'm gonna go get on an airplane, I can just grab this. It's already stocked, ready to rock and roll, and just go. Those are money. Like they are fantastic. Yeah. They are with us for every golf outing. They're with us for everything we ever do. Like you just can't beat it. Now the best thing is when you're traveling, you probably smoke most of the cigars. So they're also great to bring cigars back. Like you get this great collection while you're out and about and you have a nice place to put them. And what I like the most about having this, why I'm always prepared with one, right? There's usually one in my trunk too, just in case, is I don't have to worry about breaking the cigars on the way back, 
right? Because there's a lot of ways to rig and Ziploc bags and things. I think these guys will, will talk about some of that. But the, the biggest concern I have, especially if I buy really nice cigars, is you gotta wrap them really carefully in your luggage to make sure they don't get destroyed. And we all know about traveling on an airplane, man. If you check your bag, they just throw it. So then you yeah. gotta put it in your carry-on bag. But I'm gonna stuff it in some upward compartment or whatever it is, like who know, whoever knows. So at the end of the day, like this is just a really easy way to guarantee your cigars stay fresh. They're, they have It has a humid, humidified pack on the inside and you know they're not gonna get broken when you travel back. Certainly the ideal way to travel. For sure, absolutely. Those things are actually indestructible and they're also waterproof, so you can drop them in water and they're, yeah, and they're cigars. cost effective too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what was it, like twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Like they're pretty cheap, all yeah. in, right? Like, <laughs> and like I said, I mean, like I have both because sometimes I don't want to travel with this big ass box. Right? It is a lot of space. If I'm only like going on a weekend trip, man, I might only need this. <laughs> That's like a day for me and Paul. <laughs> it's a day trip. Yeah, that's golfing, maybe. That's that's because so, you're on. That's because you're on a um, you know a pitch count. Yeah, you're wow. on a pitch count. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that, but <laughs> he's restricted from Whatever. smoking as so, many as he wants. Paul, what's your favorite way to travel with you guys? Um, obviously, my favorite way would be with what you showed the travel humidors. That's the best way. Um, many a times I have not been prepared, especially in my youth. Um, so I'd go someplace, uh, I'm Canadian, so I used to travel to Vancouver a lot, get the Cubans up there, want to bring them back. Um, so what I started doing thanks to my uncle was a Ziploc bag. Cost like two pennies for this. Um, the trick here ideally is like I have a Bovita pack in this which is similar to what Chad has shown, just a different way of controlling the humidity while it's in there. Now, if you want to take a, a notch above this, Boveda does sell, it lo looks like just like this, like a Ziploc bag, but it is a humidity controlled bag. And those cost, I think like six or eight bucks. So if you're going somewhere and planning bringing cigars back, it's a really easy way. Cause I mean, how easy is it this to travel with? And that's a part of that. Is really move. Yeah, look at that, dude. <laughs> Jackass of the day award right there. But traveling with it, it's really nice and easy. Um, you know, there are some concerns with this method, of course, i.e. not damaging them. Ideally, if you're doing this, like when I buy the Cubans, I like to buy them in the metal tubes, the tubos, just because you get that extra layer of protection with it. But if you don't buy tubos, let's say you just buy a regular cigar, um, one method that has worked in the past is putting your cigars in here, roll them up, stuff them in a shoe. Hopefully your feet don't smell. Hopefully not. But you do this, <laughs> and then the other thing that I'll do is I'll put it in my, um, not my, on my, I'll carry it on, but I'll actually put the bag that's underneath the seat in front of me. I'll hold the cigars there. So, Interesting. Yeah. Same, same, you know, same bag as my laptop or my iPad, because um, I know that that's going to be my most prized possessions are in there. And so it's easy to control, easy to take care of. I have a special travel backpack that I use here where it's very easy to lay the cigars here. So when it's in here, it's at the very top. I don't have to worry about it getting damaged or smashed. So for me, it's a very easy and clean method for travel. Um, like I said, kind of my preferred way if I'm bringing cigars back and I know that um, this is something I'll try and do typically. Or if I buy too many, because I only bring, maybe I only bring the five count and I bring back 10 cigars, the cheaper ones will go back in here and come back that way. So I think mm. like, what's awesome about this is it takes up so little space, right? Like you, you don't have to have this cigar box, right? That you're traveling with, you're planning for. Like this literally takes like a little slot in a pocket. And then if you find cigars you want, it's really easy. Load them up, bring them back. And now they take up space, but it's worth it. Where do you travel with the, the, 10, the 10 cigar box? Whether you find good cigars or not, you still are packing a 10 cigar box. It's a little what, bulky, yeah. Right? So it's just, yeah. it's just harder to travel with. Yeah, absolutely. So Quan got tasked with the hard ones a day. Because well, we know he's the one that just randomly picks up too many cigars. I always pick up too many cigars. <laughs> if you ask my wife, well, don't ask my wife. She'll tell you. If you really, really have to MacGyver it, I mean, we're talking about you don't have the Bovita packs. You don't have any, like, sort of Ziploc bag because... You're in a rush and you are only wearing one pair of shoes where you can't put any anything in there. 
the least thing, because everyone's supposed to br brush their teeth in the morning, you know, carries around a garment bag or a toiletry, I should They're say. They're supposed to brush their teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I would sacrifice my toiletry stuff and put my cigars in here. And these actually, I've tried it several times. And like you said, you know, what, back when I was uh, traveling in Chicago and I found a great cigar shop there. Could Can't remember the name, but... I also brought back, you know, several cigars. This is the way I brought it home. And so basically, these are somewhat padded. They're um, also moisture proof. And you can literally wrap your cigars in your boxers. And these. Or t shirt. Boxers. <laughs> Clean boxers. Clean boxers. And these cigars the will make it. Throwback to the St. Patty's Day episode. That's what he was wearing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't wearing any boxers that day. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So you can literally wrap your cigars in a t shirt or a really clean boxer, and usually maybe a couple of them, and make sure that they're nice and insulated or padded both sides, all sides. And you can travel with these back home. Preferably, on a carry-on, you know, where you know you're not throwing around the luggage and you're packing these with without any like heavy objects nearby. But this will make it safely home. And this is what you do if you don't have anything to travel back, your precious cigars. And, you know. I, you know that's genius, Steve. It got me thinking of something I never even considered before. My wife's makeup case. Oh, yeah, those yeah. are hard cases. Yeah, because they're, exactly, they're typically a hard case with a zipper, so if you have a kind enough wife, or if you're female, like, uh, what was her name? Hillary. Hillary. Makeup case. So, I just heard, throw out the makeup, load it with cigars. I don't feel like that might not go over so well in my house, but... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe you can sneak a few in there. <laughs> so I get in even more trouble when she finds out the cigars cost more than the makeup. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. No. <laughs> I had a cigar the other day that cost, you know, that costed more than my round of golf. All right, cigar. What are you picking up, Chad? What are your thoughts? This is good. It's just a big stick, man. Like, I wasn't joking. That's a lot. I'm not used to having things like that in my mouth. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> you mean when you're awake? <laughs> we just went... <laughs> we just had a Las Vegas uh, trip, and boy, it was epic. We'll put we'll put some. Just put it this way: he we'll has something some bigger in his at the mouth. end, and that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put some pictures at, at the very end of this thing. A really good trip. Eleven guys, four days golf at the end. Like a lot, a lot of fun, man. Just a quick highlight. What was your favorite part about the trip? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them, like shooting guns. I had never shot a gun, and I didn't even just get to shoot guns. I got to shoot like four guns from like a handgun to a like assault rifle to a machine gun. A full-on machine, machine gun. No joke. Like stuff you can't even do in California because it's all, all illegal. But in Vegas, man, it's still legal. Like that was a lot of fun, man. And I found out I'm not so bad at shooting guns. Now I need to go buy a gun because I was pretty spot on on that target, which was pretty money. Um, outside of that, man... The electronic craps was fun, even though we got smoked for money. I just wanted to play it. It's kind of weird playing craps with no dice on a plexiglass table. Huh. It's, uh, all of it was freaking weird. But other than that, man, I mean, the pool was sweet. March Madness, dude, in the pool was fucking oh, ultra was awesome. fun, dude. Especially because we all won money. We won money. Boom. Boom. So Always I mean, take the underdogs. Take the underdogs, man. Add a parlay, man, because that like paid me out extra, too, which was mm -hmm. sweet. So I lost one bet, won another bet, and won the parlay. So I made out like a bandit. Saturday sweet. night was good. Gambling. Dude, we did so much on just Saturday, like the whole day, actually. Yeah, that's like, true. It's crazy when you think about how much we accomplished. But that's a tale for another day. The cigar, man, honestly, like, like the draw's a little hard because it's big. Yeah. Um, but it is Even ultra smooth. Hard. It is mild. Mm -hmm. So price it. I know it's hard because I mean we're still in our foot third. I'm thinking, yeah, because we're in the such early. 
Like right now, it I'm really thinking, opens up right now. Like I'm almost in the middle of it, and it's I'm so thinking, good. I'm thinking just because the size of it and the decent draw and quality and stuff. I'm thinking ten to fifteen is the price range I'd put it at. I'd probably put it at like twenty to twenty five. Twenty twenty five. But you that's guys, to be seen, man. Because you guys care to guess? Bit, as I get down a little bit further, like but this could easily become a four dollar cigar. You guys care to guess? Just, just naming the brand. Just name, you know, naming the maker. Well, I already told you my guess. Rocky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it right, dude. I'd say Perdomo. Well, guys, this is something that I've always wanted to feature on this show. This is a new cigar called Latitude Zero, and it's got some really, really good rating. You can pick up one of these sticks for like seven to eight bucks, oh, this size, and it's a uh, it's 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 a uh, gordo size, and the ring gauge is sixty. So that's what these guys are complaining about: how much lip they have to put around this. <laughs> it's like, but it's that girth, you know, yeah. <laughs> the way you said the girth, you know, <laughs> whole motion, everything. <laughs> yeah, but I really really like these cigars, and um, <clears throat> you know they're. An up-and-coming cigar brand everyone's raving about it all the cigar makers are envious of their success right now and I've been seeing nothing but really good reviews so um, you know as as you get closer to the end it opens up even nicer and I couldn't put this thing down I mean I smoked this down to a half inch nub it's really really good so we'll I highly recommend it so we got the rest of the night for that thing man it's gonna take the rest of the night it is. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Hillary, hopefully, hopefully you liked the episode. Awesome suggestion. Absolutely. Everybody else, viewers, definitely leave us suggestions. Leave us comments. Let us know. We love to bring what you guys want to see. Otherwise, we're just picking topics, picking topical things like Russia, Ukraine, all this kind of fun stuff, which those are great to do, too. And hopefully you guys all love those episodes, too. But if you give us good topics, we will feature it. That is the idea here. We want to record what you want to see. With that, gentlemen, where's your drink? Let's call this one of wraps. Right. Drink up. Burn Burn down. Down. Take. <laughs>